Most people are out at a bar or at a party or doing something cool on a Saturday night. I sit in front of a camera and talk about music. That's how I party. I am the one, the way you're trying to... Hello Internet, this is Olin from what I'm listening to. A lot of the bands I talk about on here usually have one, two, maybe all of the members are famous, but normally they're famous because of that one band. But on some occasions, some of those members from those bands decide to go branch out and work on other projects. And sometimes those projects involve other members of famous bands. And when they come together to make something, that's what's called a supergroup. There have been many, many fantastic supergroups out there, some of which have only been around for either one album or one performance. But the sheer fact that all these famous people decide to play together and make music together is just so cool. So for this week's video, I went through my collection and I picked out five of my favorite albums by five fantastic supergroups. So with all that being said, let's get started. At number 5, the first album I have here is by a band called Plus 44. Drowning in drunk sincerity, a sad and lonely girl. Quick ride and rise out, quick ride and rise out, baby come on. This is this something familiar about me, the past is only the future with the lights on. Plus 44 is a band consisting of four members, Mark Hopus and Travis Barker, who are both in Blink-182, as well as Shane Gallagher and Craig Fairbaugh, who are both in the band The Mercy Kills. This band formed sort of in that weird phase when Blink-182 first broke up. Tom and Mark were not getting along very well. Tom went and formed his own band, The Boxcar Racer, which also had Travis in it, and then Mark formed this band. They only ever put out this one album before ultimately reforming Blink-182, but it's awesome. When playing in Blink-182, Mark's songs tended to be more of the fun sounding songs, while Tom's songs were a little bit more on the emotional side. This album, however, though fronted by Mark, is actually not really as pop punky and fun as you'd expect some of his work to be. It really straddles that border of being an emo record. But that's one of the reasons why I love this album. I think it shows a certain maturity in his songwriting and that he's not just a guy pumping out all these fun songs to get a radio hit. And even when you lock the doors and slide behind the unlit shades None of us are strangers anymore so fall asleep with the windows open This is a fantastic record. I think it's a bit underrated, but for those who have heard Blink have likely heard this. And for whatever reason, if you are a fan of Blink-182 and you haven't heard this, definitely recommend checking it out. Really interesting and insightful record, and if they ever do come out with another album, I'm definitely picking it up. At number four, the next album I have is The Dead Weather. The Dead Weather is an interesting band. It was originally started by Jack White, but the catch was that he didn't want it to be another project where he was the frontman. Instead, he decided to take a step back and play drums on the record. So he enlisted his former raconteur's bandmate Jack Lawrence to play bass, got Dean Fertitta from Queens of the Stone Age to play guitar, and rounded things off with getting Alison Mosshart from The Kills on vocals. And with all those guys coming together, we got this record. These guys are still actually going, having put out a record I want to say in 2016 or 2017. But the main reason I pick this record is because it's the first album in their discography, and it's also the first album that I ever heard by them. And personally, I think it has their best work. Six Feet Tall has this incredibly sexy guitar riff, but it's also really bluesy and raw. I Cut Like a Buffalo is a little more on the experimental side, kind of dabbling in dub. And Hang From the Heavens is just a straight up kick-ass rock song I like to grab you by the hair and hang you up from the heavens I don't know how to let you go 
This is a magnificent record, and I do appreciate that Jack White is not the center of attention on this album. I love the things he's done with the White Stripes, and I've loved all his other projects, but it is pretty nice to have a big name like him take a step back, do something in the rhythm section, and let the other guys have the limelight. So if you have not checked out this band and are a fan of Jack White or any of the aforementioned names, I highly recommend checking this album out. It is so, so good. Really bluesy, really raw and powerful, and just great. At number three, we have an album by Them Crooked Vultures. These guys may be my favorite modern day supergroup of all time. It's a trio and it consists of Josh Homme on guitars and vocals, Dave Grawl on the drums, and John Paul Jones on bass. At the time when I discovered this album, I was in a huge, huge Queens of the Stone Age kick. In fact, I think it's safe to say that I was more in a Josh Homme kick than anything. I was loving every single album by Queens that I was hearing. I was also enjoying some of the stuff that Eagles of Death Metal had put out, and dabbling a little bit with Caius. So when I read about this band and saw that Dave Grawl and John Paul Jones were involved, I was so, so stoked to hear it. Nights in my veins, it's cold me, racing along these arteries in love. I think back in the day, this album really didn't get the recognition that it deserves now. And I can understand it because really, at surface value, it's just another Josh Homme project. But if you can kind of step away from that mindset and just listen to this album by itself, there are some solid, solid songs on here. No One Loves Me and Neither Do I is one of my favorites. Dead End Friends is another great one. Elephants is great. Even their weird little interlude song, Interlude with Ludes, which is more of like a odd experimental ambient song is fantastic. I've always been behind you, so I think we should meet. I sharpened my lines, so I'm gonna use them. These guys are currently on a hiatus, which is no surprise because all the guys are probably working on the main bands that they're in. But Dave has teased that they will eventually reunion, and for the love of God, I really hope they do, and I hope they put out another record because this is so, so good. So if any of the members of this band are watching, please get back together and make another album. I, please, please, th this is so good. It really needs a follow-up. At number two, the next album I have is by A Perfect Circle. Never got me this far, then tricky got me in. I am what I'm after, but don't need another friend. A Perfect Circle is a pretty interesting supergroup. Over the years, they've had a revolving cast of people coming and going and contributing to their albums. But the two consistent members of this band are Maynard James Keenan from Tool and Billy Howardell from Ashes Divide. I picked this album because the people involved with the band at this point are fantastic, but I also think that this is personally their best album. As the title suggests, the main theme of this album is addiction, and every single song on here is more or less of a scenario that someone who's addicted to drugs, alcohol, or whatever undergoes. Songs like The Package talk about being so reclusive, not wanting to make any friends, and just getting what they need and disappearing. Weak and Powerless is like the anthem for anybody who is experiencing or has experienced addiction. And one of my favorite songs is a cover of a Failure song called The Nurse Who Loved Me. Failure is an awesome band who I will talk about in another vlog at another time, but A Perfect Circle's take on the song is a lot less grungy and more being atmospheric, slow, and beautiful. I'm taking her home with me, all dressed in white, she's got everything. The 
people involved on this record, other than Billy and Maynard, include Jordy White, who was the bassist in Marilyn Manson, Josh Freeze, who has played drums in so many projects, including Guns N' Roses, Devo, and The Replacements, and Troy Von Leeuwen, who was the guitarist in Failure, and at one point was the guitarist in Queens of the Stone Age. A great cast of people coming together to make a beautiful and dark record. I don't even think you really need to be a fan of any of those members' bands to enjoy this record. It stands out on its own, it's incredible, and really deals with some interesting and dark stuff. And at number one, I have an album by a band called Adams for Peace. These guys are amazing, and in some ways the members involved are kind of unlikely candidates to have gotten together to make music in the first place. The people I talked about in the other albums have kind of floated in similar circles, if not the same circles, by playing in similar bands. But the people involved on this album include Tom York of Radiohead, Nigel Godridge, who is a producer for most of Radiohead's albums, Flea from the Red Hot Chili Peppers, Mauro Rafosco, who played in a band called Foro in the Dark, and Joey Warrenker, who has played with bands such as Beck, Elliot Smith, and R.E.M. It might almost seem like it's a Tom York side project, and to some extent it's very reminiscent of Radiohead's work. The songs on here are just so interesting, and I think it really displays the amazing songwriter and composer that Tom York is. This album really goes to show that Tom can make some fantastic music that isn't just exclusive to Radiohead. Not to mention the contributions from the other guys just give the album such an interesting character. They have only made one album Album, and it's a short album, unfortunately, but all nine songs on here are absolutely fantastic. One of these days, I would love for them to come back and make another record. Doubt it will happen because it seems like they were a one and done kind of band. But if the day comes where they do decide to release a record, I will be buying it the day it comes out because this is a fantastic band, absolutely worth checking out if you're a fan of experimental music, Radiohead, or any of the people involved. Alrighty, Internet, that does it for me. Hey, if you have any bands or albums you want me to check out, particularly anything by any supergroups, leave a comment down below, and if I like it, maybe I'll include it in a vlog. Also, if you like this video, be sure to hit that subscribe button. It shows the support, and I'll love your face for it. And you can also follow my Wilt Instagram for even more music. I post a new album on there every single day, talk a little bit about it, and it gives a little bit of insight of what's in my collection. So thank you all for watching, and this is Olin from What I'm Listening To, signing out. Goodbye. Mm-hmm.